hello everybody so uh, we are going to start the last part of the um, of this uh, series which is the uh, the uh, discussion on the combustion reactions so combustion is uh, is just a normal reaction but there are some special uh, things about combustion that makes it uh, a little more uh, interesting for us and we 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 study it in more details uh, than uh, normal reactions. There are not going to be a lot of uh, new information. M most of the information that we're going to mention here are, are known information. However, it's just uh, because it's a very, very common reaction and, and it's a reaction that is uh, used everywhere and every time. So we, we discuss it in more details. So combustion is known to be the rapid reaction of any substance with oxygen. And usually this substance uh, or when we want to burn something, uh, um, it's it's uh, mainly a fuel. And the the main reason, uh, or or the the main outputs of this, uh, of course, there are some gases that that come out of combustion, like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen. Uh, I mean, water vapor, uh, sulfur oxides, and nitrogen oxides. And these are all um, side products of of the uh, of combustion. The main the main product uh, of combustion, which is uh, why we we do. Uh, burn the fuels is uh, producing heat um, and I think this is a very well-known information that the main goal is to produce heat of course we are not interested in producing a lot of carbon dioxide or a lot of sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides because these are harmful gases and we all know the negative impacts of these gases on the environment and the global warming and the all these uh, these uh, uh, things that are happening due to the like very very big amounts of these gases uh, Release to the the atmosphere, but anyway, so the the um, the heat is very important because we need the or the energy is very important because this this energy is what we use to uh, to cook food and to uh, to produce electricity. So um, the, the the one of the main main or the most used ways of producing electricity is by boiling water and then uh, running turbines. Uh, so we need to to heat the water to turn it into steam, and then the steam turns the turbines. Um, there are other things like like the 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 uh, internal combustion engines in in, in vehicles. It's it's also uh, combustion. So uh, uh, the fuel is being burned in, in the in the engines. So. <coughs> Um, the the uh, products which is the carbon dioxide uh, monoxide the sulfur and nitrogen oxides are released to the atmosphere and it's important for us to know that uh, or to to know how to calculate the amounts of uh, of these harmful gases that are, are being released to the atmosphere um, this is a very important thing and we need to know how to do the calculation that's why we are interesting in doing the calculations on combustion units uh, in in some details um, what we're going to do um, in the coming few videos is uh, we are going to start with a discussion on some of the terms that are uh, commonly used in um, in combustion reactions um, and then we will uh, we will have some some examples to to um, um, understand these these uh, terms in more in, in or, or better and then um, that's it there is there is nothing new uh, regarding the mass balance calculation so we are going to do the mass balance uh, calculations using the extent of reaction and the atomic balance methods as we used to do before so it's it's nothing new here uh, compared to what we used to do before uh, but again, it's just focusing on combustion reactions. So uh, the the uh, first uh, term that we want, or the two terms that we, that we want to uh, discuss here, are the complete and incomplete combustions. So complete and incomplete are both combustion reactions, but the difference is in the uh, products of combustion. So if we have, um, or what we mean by combustion reaction, it's a combustion of a fuel where all carbon converts into carbon dioxide, and all hydrogen converts into water vapor, sulfur into SO2, and nitrogen into NO2. Um, and there are things that wouldn't differ, um, for example, hydrogen. So hydrogen has no other option than turning into water vapor, but carbon can turn into carbon monoxide and nitrogen can turn into nitrogen monoxide. And if the product is carbon monoxide or nitrogen monoxide, then we consider this as incomplete combustion. So uh, this is one thing that we we uh, we can start with as a new piece of information here that we can 
write the balance equations for both uh, types of combustion, the complete and incomplete combustion, by just the knowledge of the uh, molecular formula of the fuel. So, for example, if we have methane, then the methane will be CH4. We know the chemical formula of methane. So we will have, if it's incomplete combustion, then we will have one carbon monoxide because we have one carbon here. We have H4, so we have two H2 uh, in the product. And then we can count the number of oxygen molecule or, or yeah oxygen molecules that we need so uh, we have one two three uh, so we have three oxygen atoms which is three over two o two um, if it's complete combustion then it is methane plus oxygen the only difference is in um, co2 so we have two oxygen and two oxygen so it's four which is two o two so this is something that we can do for any any um, fuel with any uh, chemical formula so for example, if we have here C5H12, um, then it will produce 5 carbon monoxide, 6 H2O, and then we can get back to oxygen. So it's 5 plus 6, it's 11 over 2O2. Uh, if it's complete combustion, then we have 5 CO2, 6 H2O, and then we have uh, 10 plus 6, it's 16 over 2, which is 8 O2. Sometimes the fuel will contain... Uh, something else other than oxygen and hydrogen. So, for example, we can burn um, alcohols like um, like methyl, methyl alcohol in this case, which is methanol. So if we if we write the balance equation, also it's going to be the same. So carbon, uh, only one carbon, so it's one CO. If it's hydrogen, then it is four hydrogen, so it's two H2O. And then we will, we will find back how many oxygen um, molecules we need. So we have O2, two oxygens, and one, so it's three oxygen. One is already here. So it's going to be 1 O2. The same for complete combustion is going to be 3 over 2 O2. So writing the equation is not, is not a big deal. We can, we can simply write it. So in this case, um, this is one difference between these kind of uh, uh, systems and the previous systems that we discussed in the, in the reactive systems. That here, we, uh, we don't need to be given the, the chemical reaction uh, or the, the, the balanced equation uh, of the reaction that's taking place we can write the reaction ourselves. Um, for uh, these equations that we have here, we are writing the equation assuming that we have oxygen uh, only, but usually we don't, or, or in, in most of the cases, we don't provide just oxygen. So what we do is we provide air for combustion. And this air is not only oxygen, we know that air consists of different um, different um, um, gases and the main constituents of air is our uh, our oxygen and nitrogen um, there are almost or maybe less than one percent of other gases like argon like co2 like water vapor um, but for the majority of of the of the components in the air are oxygen and nitrogen these one percent are mainly non-combustible materials or, or gases so we can consider um, just to simplify things for us uh, in the calculations we can consider that air consists of 21 percent oxygen and 79 percent nitrogen which is a very 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 good approximation okay so uh, that's why when we calculate the or, or if you look for the average molecular weight of air it uh, it would be around 29 which is the mole fraction times the molecular weight for oxygen and nitrogen so this is uh, something that we can also know ourselves, that if we have a combustion unit and we don't know how much air is going in, we can know how much oxygen that we need, and then we can calculate the accompanying nitrogen to the oxygen. So uh, it's something that we cannot, uh, cannot avoid. You will have a lot of nitrogen with oxygen. It's almost four times the oxygen that we have will, will be nitrogen. So this is something that we cannot avoid, but this is something that um, we can uh, or we need to uh, keep in mind while doing the combustion calculations. So I'll stop here and we'll continue next time, John. So I'll see you then.